The Roman soldier, and by extension the Roman legion, is easily one of the most iconic and effective military units to have ever graced the battlefield. The Roman soldier reached an entirely new level when it came to tactical flexibility, discipline and organisation. But one question still burns. How did the Romans fare when devoid of their weapons, their armour and their numbers? How would an individual Roman soldier fare in unarmed combat? Welcome back guys. Today we'll be looking at the unarmed utility of the Roman soldier. In the interest of fairness, we are just going to cover the basic Roman infantry. Individual auxiliary units would have obviously brought to the table their own native martial arts and trainings, such as those from Greece who would have been suitably trained in Pancration. In reference to centurions, these grizzled veterans would have seen innumerable battles and would have been more than competent fighters through the virtue of experience alone. So instead we focus today on the lone Roman soldier. To understand the effectiveness of a Roman soldier without his weapons, it's worth looking at the training and culture of the time. Now, contrary to popular belief, even the modern day infantry soldier receives exceptionally basic unarmed training. Even special forces only receive a slightly supplemented version of this. Now, you might be thinking, how can this be? Surely soldiers are capable of kicking ass at a rate that would make an MMA fighter blush. And back then even more so, right? Oh, you'd be wrong. To roughly quote Jocko Willink, a former Navy SEAL and avid martial artist, there are far more important things to focus on. Sure, hand-to-hand -hand combat is important, as is the ability to subdue someone, but it is in no way a focal point of training. You have weapons training, group tactics, scouting and surveying, and maintaining equipment. To relate this to the Roman, it's important to remember the workload required of the Roman legionary. The Roman soldier was also an engineer, responsible for the building, maintenance, upkeep and security of the camp, and for the very construction of the roads on which they campaigned. None of these tasks would lend oneself to having the spare time to master unarmed combat. This is also compounded by the Roman military ethos. Discipline, unit cohesion and the legion as a whole were of far more interest to the commanders than the individual's ferocity in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The integrity of the formation and through it Rome will always come first. As far as the Roman culture goes, the Romans, like many others at the time, did have an ingrained warrior culture, but Rome itself, theirs worked in tandem with the Roman military ethos. The Romans highly valued skill at arms and discipline, and considered these traits truly Roman. That being said, like most of the ancient cultures, the Romans did have an appreciation for both boxing and wrestling. And after the conquest of Greece, the Roman Empire did begin to see a rise in Pancration, the Greek martial arts similar to modern mixed martial arts, as a spectator sport alongside the gladiatorial combat. However, where does this leave us with the unarmed abilities of the Roman soldier? In my personal opinion, devoid of armour and weapons, the Roman soldier would have been a little inadequate compared to other fighters of the day. However, it was the strength in arms as a unit which really catapulted Rome to being the dominant world superpower we all know it as today.